So if you have a hole in your knit fabric, there are plenty of ways to darn, to repair it. My favorite is Swiss darning, and you'll need something like a darning egg, is what this is called, or a mushroom would work too that has a flatter surface on the top, and the darning egg just gives you a relatively flat surface to work on, and it makes it so you don't catch any of these fibers there. And you'll need a blunt tapestry needle. And I'll be using a contrasting color so that you can see the stitches. Swiss darning is done with ladders that go above and below the hole um, enough that you get stable stitches so that it won't come loose again. And I will make another video to demonstrate a reinforcement of worn stitches instead of a hole, but for a hole you use the ladders. And what you're going to want to do is come in, you can see where the damage ends about this row, come in like a row below that so that you're not going to just have it unravel again. And you want to come up and leave enough of a tail so that you can weave that in. Uh, see this column that the damage doesn't extend to, vertically the column. Coming up is the direction that the stitch above takes. And that's what we're trying to replicate. With the ladder, also go a row above. So you'll go behind that stitch above it because that'll make it part of this row. And you go behind the whole knit column stitch. You don't want to pull it really tight, it's just enough to keep the hole from gaping. And then you'll go back in the hole you came and into the next column so that you're crossing over two threads. one complete ladder you have here. So that covers one column. And then we're getting into the columns that actually have the damage. Again, you go behind the whole column stitch. And then back into the same you came and into the next one to the left. That you have two ladder stitches. The reason you want to use Swiss darning is, instead of a traditional woven fabric style of darning is so that it retains the flexibility of a knit fabric that you can't get with a traditional type of darning. This will replicate the knit stitches and make it just as flexible. Go over one more column, so you have that stable column of stitches. And this is a good 
section to cut off. I like to have the ladders be on their own thread so that you can tighten them if you need to. And then start a new thread for the actual replication of the knit stitches. And you can start underneath this row below, so it'll be part of this row above where the ladders start. Again, leave a tail so that you can weave that in. And then you'll go behind your first ladder. You see the direction of the knit stitch takes that shape as it comes up this stitch and then goes around and then back in. And that's the direction you want to take your yarn. So then you go into the same hole that you came out of. And that replicates a knit stitch. And you're into the next column. You just go behind the ladder. And that's half the stitch. And you go into the same hole, out into the next column. And that's your second replicated stitch. It's important not to pull too tight or the tension on your replicated stitches won't match the tension of the rest of the fabric and it will not have the flexibility that you want. So you're back into your stable stitches that do not have the damage of the hole. And you can do one column of stitches that are outside of your ladders. And you just come up, you can see these bars, horizontal bars between the stitches in the column. You'll just come under that. To go up a row. So we go in the hole you were in and then just come up one bar to move up one row. That way you can continue stitching for your second row across. And it helps when you're going left to right if you're right-handed to turn your work this way and what you'll do, how it looks from this angle, is you're still continuing with that same shape, just going the other way around. But that way you can make it more comfortable to stitch in this direction. That was too tight. And if you do a stitch too tight, you can just kind of pull it out a bit so that it matches the tension again. And continue stitching. It really doesn't require much tension at all. It feels like very loose stitching when you're doing it until you're finished and it looks right and it matches the tension of the rest of your fabric.
almost done with your second row here. And you can do the same of going into the stitch. Get those to line up. And going up one horizontal bar in the column. So you just go up by one row. And you're ready to do the third row. It's very important to make sure you are getting inside the top loops of your previous row of stitches or it will come unraveled again. And you can trim things like that later. Uh, And that's another row finished.
and once you have that amount filled in to where you've covered all the rows, you can bring all of these tails to the inside and weave in all your ends as you would with any knit project. And that would be your completed your completed mend. You could cut off all these little frayed bits from the hole. But it's pretty hard to distinguish if you use the same color of yarn. This from the original knit fabric. Because it stretches the same, has the same elasticity, and it replicates the look of the knit stitches. So that is Swiss darning for a hole. I will make another video to show Swiss darning as a form of reinforcement, which does not require the ladders, but still uses the same style of knit stitches. Thanks for watching.